friends! Today, I want to make a dog sweater. My plan for this project is to do most of the back of the sweater in basket weave, and then we'll do a ribbed collar. That's the plan at this point. But before we get started, let's talk about what you're going to need for this project. You're going to need a crochet hook. I'm going to be using two different sizes today. For the collar, I'll be using a 4.5 millimeter, and for the rest of the body, I will be using a 6 millimeter hook. If you've got them, we're also going to be using some stitch markers today. You'll also need a yarn needle and some scissors, as well as some yarn. I am using this Briggs and Little wool today. This is in the colorway Springtime, and this one, I think it's just called pink. I also plan on using some buttons on this one. We'll see if that ends up happening, but some buttons. So gather your supplies and let's do it. We're gonna start with the collar section of the sweater. Then we'll move into this basket weave portion. We're going to begin with a slip knot. From here, chain 10. For this portion, like I said before, I'm using the 4.5 millimeter hook. One, two, three, nine, and 10. From here, I'm going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook. One and two, complete a single crochet, and then I'm going to single crochet across. Just one single crochet in each chain stitch across. At the end of this row, you will have nine stitches in your row. Here I am at the end of that first row. I'll finish with a single crochet and then chain one and turn. For row number two, I'm going to start with a single crochet in the first stitch of the row, a normal single crochet, and then for the remaining eight stitches of the row, I am going to single crochet in the back loop only. So we're not gonna single crochet through both loops, just the back loop. And I'm going to single crochet all the way to the end of the row, back loops only. Here I am at the end of row number two. In the last stitch of the row, I'm gonna put my single crochet through the back loop only, and then chain one and turn the work. Now for row number three, we're going to start this row with a single crochet through the back loop only. Then we're gonna single crochet back loops only across the row, but in the last stitch of the row, we're gonna go through both loops. And here I am at the end of row number three. So in that last stitch, I'm going to single crochet through both loops. Here is the first point where a stitch marker is gonna be helpful. So I'm going to stitch mark this side just to remind me that whenever I'm coming to this side, I wanna do a single crochet through both loops. When I'm working on this side of the work, I'm going to still be single crocheting through the back loop only. This will make it easier to remember when you're just sort of working and not watching what you're doing. For row number four, I'm gonna begin by doing a chain one and turn. And since I'm on the side with the stitch marker, I am going to single crochet through both loops. For the rest of the row, I'll single crochet in the back loops only all the way to the end of the row. And here I am at the end of row number four. So I'm going to put my single crochet through the back loop of that last stitch, complete the single crochet, chain one and turn. And now for row number five, I will start this row with a single crochet through the back loop. For the rest of row number five, I'll single crochet through the back loop only but in the last stitch of the row, I'll single crochet through both loops. Here I am at the end of that row. So I'll put my single crochet through both loops of the row and then chain one and turn. At this point, you can already start to see what doing the single crochets through both loops versus the back loop only actually is doing to the crochet. If I pull my hook out here, you can see that the single crochet through both loops is a nice straight line. But the single crochet through the back loops only begins to create this sort of ripple, this ruffle and that works perfectly for a sort of ribbed collar for a dog sweater. So I'm gonna pick my hook up and I am going to continue in this exact same repeat for as long as it takes for me to get this band long enough to reach around Thunder's neck. I'll let you know how many rows that is 
once I get to that point. I'm just gonna zoom through this part, crocheting in the back loops only, except for the first stitch of the row on rows where I'm starting with the stitch marker, or I guess where the tail is. And here I am at the end of the collar. So Thunder, my chihuahua, He's about six pounds and he has a pretty thick neck for a little dog. So if you're making a chihuahua, a thick chihuahua size sweater like I am, you're gonna want your band to be about 10 inches long or about 25 centimeters long. And for the width of the band, if you did nine stitches like me, you're gonna get around two inches or five centimeters wide. So there's my collar. Now let's move in to the body portion. But before I do that, let me show you again where we go through both loops on the single crochet you can see we get this nice dense straight line and then where we went through the front and back loops we get this zigzag line so it kind of looks like a ribbed collar whereas this side is going to be really easy for us to crochet into without missing any stitches. For this next part, I wanna change yarn colors. So I am gonna trim the yarn here. I'm gonna leave myself a tail on there so that I can use it to sew together the collar in the end. But I'm gonna pull my tail through just so that's secured off. Now, I think we should work in a pink color, but which one? Oh, also I forgot to mention, it's 40 rows. <laughs> For this, it's 40 rows. For this next part, we're going to switch from the 4.5 millimeter over to the six millimeter hook. I'm gonna use two stitch markers as well to mark out the space we're gonna be working in because we're going to leave some of these stitches unworked as they are going to be underneath Thunder's neck. Let's zoom in for this. Next, we're gonna count eight stitches or eight rows from either side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. I'm just gonna put a stitch marker there, as well as one on the other side. Between these two markers is where we're going to be working the basket weave stitch. So to do so, I am going to insert my hook on that eighth stitch, and I'm going to pull up a loop with my new pink yarn. From here, I'm going to chain one with both pieces of yarn, and then I'm gonna pull that chain down really tight. I'm gonna drop the tail, and then I'm gonna chain two. There's one, and there's two. Now, I'm going to double crochet in the next row, the next space available for a stitch. I'm going to complete one double crochet in there. Then, I'm going to double crochet one time in each row across, all the way over to the next stitch marker. And here I am back at that stitch marker. If you're making the same size as me, then there should be 26 double crochets in this row. For the next row, for row number two of the body section, we're going to start with a chain two and turn. For this next row, we're going to be working in front post, back post double crochets. For the first stitch, we're going to yarn over insert the hook behind the entire post of the stitch, and then we're going to pull a loop up and complete a double crochet. That there is a front post double crochet. We're gonna do four of those in a row. So that was one, here's two, then three, and four. For the next four stitches, we are going to work back post double crochets. So that's a yarn over, insert the hook behind the entire work, and then grab that whole post, and then pull a loop, and complete a double crochet. Yarn over, insert the hook in front of, and then behind the entire work, Sometimes the back posts are a little bit more tricky than the front posts just because of the way the hook is faced. So just work your way through it. Four back post double crochets. There's three. And there's four. And for the next four stitches, it's four front post double crochets and four, 
and then the next four will be back post double crochets. And then guess what? The next four are gonna be front post double crochets. I'm gonna repeat the row in this exact way until I get to the end of the row, just doing four front posts, four back posts, four front posts, and I'll meet you there at the end of row number two. And here I am at the end of the row. I finished with four back post double crochets. Now I've got one stitch left, which is the same as this side where we started with a chain two. So I'm going to double crochet right into the big space between the two stitches. I'll just do a double crochet there and then chain two and turn. For row number three, it's going to be the same as row number two. We're gonna start with four front post double crochets in those first four stitches. And then we're gonna do four back post double crochets, then four front post, then four back post. It's the exact same repeat. So I'm gonna zoom through this section because we already learned how to do this stitch and I will see you at the end of row number three. And here I am at the end of that row. I'll finish with a regular double crochet through that chain two space, then chain two and turn. You can already start to see that basket weave pattern starting to show up in here. So for the next row, we're going to do one more row with the exact same repeat. So we're gonna start with front post double crochets and then four back post double crochets and then four front post, four back post, four front post, four back posts. So I'll see you at the end of this row because it's the exact same repeat. And then we're going to be doing something a little different for the next row. So I'm coming up to the end of row number four now, and you can definitely see the texture starting to form. You can see the ripple forming from those front post, back post, double crochets. But the basket weave excitement is what we're going to be completing next. So here I am finishing my last stitch of the row, a back post double crochet, and then I'll do a regular double crochet through that last chain two space chain two and turn. And now we're actually going to do the reverse of what we've been doing. So we started for the last rows with a front post double crochet. We're gonna start this row with a back post double crochet. It's the exact same as a regular back post double crochet, but we're doing it everywhere that we meet a front post double crochet. So I'm going to start with four back post double crochets. There's one, two, three, and four. And then the next four, we're going to do front post double crochets because we are meeting up with some back posts. And we're gonna do four of those. And then we're gonna do four back post double crochets, front post, back post, front post. So if you have trouble noticing where the stitches shift, you can put stitch markers every four stitches and that can make it easier to see. But once you get started on this repeat, it starts to be pretty clear when you have to switch stitches. So I'm just gonna zoom through row number five and I'll see you at the end of the row to show you what it's looking like. And here I am at the end of row number five, putting my last front post double crochet in and then don't forget to finish each row with a double crochet through the chain two space. That's gonna leave us with a nice straight edge. And then I'm gonna chain two and turn. And now for rows number six, seven, and eight, I'm gonna do the exact same thing that I did for row number five. I'm gonna start with my back post double crochets and then do front post double crochets, back post, front post, all the way across. And I will zoom through this part because it's the exact same stitches that I've been doing for row number five. I'm gonna do that for six, seven, and eight. So I will see you at the end of row number eight. If you need a little bit more of an in-depth tutorial on the front post, back post double crochets, I'll link that in the top corner now. You can go there and you can get some more details, more close-ups on that stitch if you're a little bit new to it. Actually, if you're new to any of the stitches in this tutorial, I will have all of those linked in the I cards, but I'll also link them in the description show notes down below the video. So check those out if you're new to crochet and you want some extra tutorials just on the basic stitches. So here is how it's looking after eight rows of the front post, back post, double crochet. I think it is looking very cute. You'll see once we sew the neckline together, this is going to make up the back and shoulder section of the doggy sweater. So next, 
we are going to do another four rows of the same thing we did for the first four rows. So we are gonna start with some front post double crochets. We're gonna do four of those. And then we're gonna do four back post double crochets. This is the exact same repeat that we did for the first section of the basket weave stitch. For the next four rows, so from rows eight all the way to 12, I'm going to do the repeat starting with the front post double crochets. Then for rows 13, 14, 15, and 16, I'm going to do the same repeat we did for the second section of the basket weave, which is beginning with a back post double crochet. Then from 17, 18, 19, and 20, we're gonna repeat the first four again. So I'm gonna meet you back here after I finish the end of row number 20 to show you what this basket weave is looking like and what we're going to do next. And here I'm coming up to the end of row number 20, just putting in my last four back post double crochets. And I think this is starting to look kind of like a watermelon from Minecraft, but it's not. It is not going to look like a watermelon. So we're going to switch colors now, I think. And I think we're actually done with the basket weave portion. I think now we're gonna work in half doubles and do a bit of a taper here until it's about, you know, that big in another color. And then we're gonna be working around the outside of the edge. But you can see now with those 20 rows, you end up with this very cute little basket weave pattern. And when we fold this over eventually, this is gonna be the area right on top of Thunder's back. And now we're gonna taper where his bum is and then we're gonna work along the sides and then we'll work up whatever we decide to do next. So I have my double crochet almost finished. I am gonna trim my yarn here and I am going to complete the double crochet with the new yarn color. So let me show you how I do that up close. So I begin my double crochet with a yarn over, insert the hook into the chain two space, yarn over again, pull up a loop, yarn over again, pull through two of the loops, and then on that last yarn over and pull through, I'm gonna yarn over and pull through with the new color yarn. And then from here, I'm going to chain two just with the new color. So there's one and there's two. Ooh and then I'll turn. For this next row, row number 21, I am going to complete one half double crochet in each space between the posts. So I'm gonna put my first half double crochet right there and a half double crochet, I'll show you what that looks like. We're gonna yarn over, insert the hook down in between those two posts. Then we're gonna yarn over again and pull up a loop, yarn over again, and pull through all three loops that are on the hook. Then yarn over, insert the hook and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the three loops. And I'm gonna cover my yarn tails with my half double crochet stitches and I'm just gonna half double crochet all the way across for row number 21. And here I am at the last stitch of row number 21. I'll put my last half double crochet in there, and then I'm gonna chain one and turn. For row number 22, we're going to start with half double crochet two together. So how I do that, I do a yarn over, I insert my hook into the big space between the two stitches, because that's what we're working in for this type of stitch. I'm gonna insert, pull up a loop, and a normal half double crochet, you would just complete by yarn over and pull through those three loops. What we're gonna do for this time though, we're gonna yarn over, insert, and pull up a loop, immediately insert into the next stitch and pull up a loop. Now there's four loops on the hook and I'm gonna yarn over and pull through all four loops. That is how I do half double crochet two together. Then for the rest of the row, up until we get to the last stitch, I'm going to just half double crochet down the row. When you get to the last two stitches, we're gonna be doing the same half double crochet two together, but I'll meet you when I get there. So here I am at the last couple of stitches of the row. For these last two, I'm going to do the half double crochet two together again. So yarn over, pull up a loop, 
insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then yarn over, pull through all four loops, and then I'll just chain one and turn. For row number 23, we're just gonna half double crochet across, just one half double crochet in each stitch all the way across. I'm gonna zoom through this part because it's just half double crochet and I will meet you at the end of row number 23. Here I am at the end of row number 23, I'll put my last half double crochet in there, chain one and turn. And now for row number 24, we're going to do the same decrease we did for row number 22. So I'm going to half double crochet two together for the first and last stitches of the row. Otherwise, I'm going to just half double crochet across. So here I am at the end of row number 24. I'm going to finish off this row with half double crochet two together then chain one and turn. And from here, from row number 25, I'm gonna be doing half double crochet across for row number 25, but then row number 26 is gonna be the same as row number 24. So we're gonna do decreases at the beginning and end of the row. And then row number 27 is gonna be half double crochet across. 28 will have the same decrease. 29, half double crochet across. 30, the same decrease. 31, half double crochet across, and 32 with the same decrease. I'm gonna zoom through this part because it's just a lot of half double crocheting across, and I'm going to do my decreases every other row all the way up to row number 32. So you work through that, and I will see you back here at the end of row number 32. And here I am on row number 32. I'm just finishing out my decreases with the pink variegated yarn, and I think this is going to be a point where we're gonna start working in another color again. So I'm just gonna zoom my way through the end of this 32nd row, and then we'll talk about what we're gonna do. Actually, you know what, now that I'm thinking of it, I think I'd rather finish with half double crochets. I'm going to do row number 33, just half double crochet across, and then we'll work on the next part. <laughs> So you can see at this point, it kind of looks like the line isn't straight, but really the number of stitches that is here is the correct number of stitches. It's just that these are being pulled in and these are laying flat. So once we finish the whole project, it won't be noticeable, but right now it looks like this area is wider than this area. It's not. Uh, but there we are at the end of row number 33. Now I'm gonna fold this over so we can imagine it as a dog sweater. So here is what it'll look like from the side. But to make it a dog sweater that's a little more cozy for Mr. Thunder, we need to increase the width of this area. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm going to attach my yarn here and I'm gonna start double crocheting around the outer seam of this area here in order to sort of bring down the, the shoulder and skirt of the dog sweater. So maybe we should sew the neck up at this point and work all the way around here and have it just sort of come down like a cute little skirt around his tummy. Yeah, let's do it. First, I'll get rid of this, trim that off and weave that end in. And now I'm gonna grab this yarn needle and sew the neckline together. So to sew this neckline together, I am going to use, I think I'll just use blanket stitches. So to do a blanket stitch, I am going to just line up my stitches nice and straight. And then I'm going to insert the needle into the first stitch on both pieces of fabric. And then I'm going to have a little hoop left behind here. I'm gonna insert the needle down into that loop and pull it nice and tight. And then I'll go to the second stitch of both both pieces of fabric, insert the needle into that second stitch, and in the loop that's left behind, insert the needle down into that loop, pulling it nice and tight. Same thing into the next stitch, insert the needle through both pieces of fabric, and then insert the needle down into the loop that remains. And you'll get these nice clean little stitches, and these are called blanket stitches. I'm just gonna blanket stitch all the way down this seam, until I reach the other side. And then I think I'll just weave in my ends at that point and uh, the neckline is put together. If you're not confident with hand sewing and you do not want to blanket stitch, you can absolutely slip stitch or single crochet this seam together. It will be just perfectly fine. And there we go. Now I'm gonna turn the work 
inside out so that that seam is gonna be hidden on the inside. And now it's gonna be time to work the side and front of this little sweater. I think I'm gonna come back in at this point with the green, just cause I feel like right now this doesn't really make a ton of sense color wise. And I'm gonna try and pull it back together by incorporating the green again. So to do that, I am going to still use the six millimeter hook. I'm gonna take my stitch marker out here cause I don't need it anymore. But I'm going to insert that hook into the spot where the stitch marker was. You can see that first stitch right here. That is where I am going to pull up a loop in my green yarn. Then I'm gonna chain one with the yarn and pull that chain really tight. So that's my foundation connecting me to the project. And now I'm gonna chain two. We're kind of ignoring that chain one that we did at the beginning there. Now I'm going to double crochet everywhere that I can fit a stitch. What that's probably going to mean is one double crochet per row. So if we look here, we've got space right there, then we've got space right here, then right there. So I'm going to put one double crochet in each row all the way around the project. So I'm gonna start just with some double crochets everywhere that you can fit one, basically. I've made it down the side seam now, so I'm going to do the same thing around this decrease line. I'm gonna do one double crochet in each row down. So we've made it to that bottom corner. In the corner, I am going to put four double crochets. So there's one, there's two, three, and four. And then we'll double crochet in each stitch across to the corner. And then at the next corner, we'll put four double crochets in as well. Here I am at that second corner. So I'm going to do four double crochets in here. One, two, three, and four. And now I'm going to do one double crochet in each row all the way up back to the neckline. So I've made it back to the neckline here. What I'm gonna do at this neckline area is I am going to just double crochet across the underside of that neckline until we get back to where we actually started this round. And then we're gonna be doing another textured stitch to add even more random whimsy to this silly little dog sweater. All right, now that I've made it back to where I started, I am going to slip stitch to join the round. I'm gonna slip stitch through the entire chain two though. You'll see why at the end of the round. So now we're gonna call this round two because this was now round one of the frilly area of the sweater. We're gonna start round two with a chain of two and then we're going to begin with the ribbed pattern that I use for almost all of my sleeves. We're gonna start with a front post double crochet followed by a back post double crochet and then another front post and then another back post. You'll see we're using the same stitches that we did for the basket weave stitch, but we're doing a different order and therefore the texture is going to be completely different. This is going to come out like a ribbed stitch that you might use around the collar of a sweater or for the cuffs. So I'm going to go around this entire project again with this front post, back post, double crochet rib until I get back to where we joined that round. I'm gonna zoom through this part and I will see you at the end of round number two. Here I am at the end of round number two. You can see I finished on a front post double crochet. I'm going to join my round with a slip stitch through the double crochet chain two that we did here. And you can see by doing that as a slip stitch, it creates a back post double crochet. So we've got front post double crochet, and then our join, and then we do another front post double crochet. But when it's all said and done, that appears like a back post double crochet. So now for row number three, I'm gonna start with a chain two, and then I'm gonna do the exact same repeat. I'm going to do front post, back post, front post, back post, all the way around. And I'm going to do that for rounds number three, four, and five. Five rounds total with this front post, back post, double crochet repeat. 
the ribbed edge stitch for the sweater. Doesn't look like it makes a ton of sense yet, but I'm sure we'll pull this together by just adding more and more details until it looks finished. So I'm gonna zoom through rows three, four, and five, and I will come back here at the end of row number five to show you what we're gonna do next. All right, here I am coming up to the end of round number five for the whatever this part of the sweater is gonna be called. I'll join my round. I'm just gonna chain one and pull the loop so I could show you how it's looking. You can see because we didn't do any increases, it just sort of starts to move straight down. So it's going to kind of protect around Thunder's chest on the front side and then along the sides of his body. Don't worry about the colors. This is a dog sweater. Thunder looks fashionable in anything that he wears. Okay. Okay, so the next part of this little sweater is I want to create kind of like a frill, I've decided. <laughs> so we're gonna switch the color again. So I'm going to connect my yarn now at this same section. I'm gonna pull out the last stitch that I did. So I'm gonna join by doing my slip stitch to join, but I'm going to use the new yarn as well for that slip stitch. Then I'm gonna chain one, pull all the ends down really tight, and then I'm gonna chain two with the new yarn. There's one and there's two. And now my plan is to just put two double crochets in each stitch all the way around. I don't know if this is a great idea, but I think it's a great idea. So I'm gonna start with a double crochet just in that space with the chain coming out of it. And now I'm gonna put two double crochets in each of these large spaces all the way around. It's going to create a cute little ruffle around the bottom edge of the sweater. And I'm also double crocheting over my tails so that I don't have to deal with any weaving in any ends. So far, I've only had one end to weave in and that was on our seam of the collar. So from here for this row number six, I am going to just go ahead and put two double crochets in each stitch all the way around. I'm gonna zoom through that and I will meet you back here at the end of round number six. All right, here I am coming up to the end of round number six. I'm just putting my last couple of double crochets in here and it looks so cute. I'm kind of rethinking the straps with the buttons though and I'm thinking of maybe just including an elastic, but let me finish this round first. So I'm going to join the round with a slip stitch, but should I change yarn colors yet? To me, this looks like a sea cucumber now. <laughs> The plan though is that this is more of a spring and summer dog sweater. It's not going to have as much warmth to it. It's more of just a back cover. So what I'm thinking is that I'm going to sew an elastic band maybe from here around and have it connect on this side. But I think I wanna go a little bit further with this ruffle to make it even more adorable in my opinion, but <laughs> that remains to be seen. So I think I'll do another round of double crochets. Uh, this one, I'm not gonna do any um, increases. So no more two double crochets going into one stitch. Instead, I'll just start this round with a chain of two, and then I'm just gonna put one double crochet into each stitch all the way around. And we'll be able to see those ruffles a little bit more clearly at the end of this round. All right, here I am coming up to the end of that second row of double crochets. It looks so cute. I wasn't sure about the colors mixing together well when we started this, but I very much like how they look now. I hope you like them too, but even if you don't, you can make yours out of whatever color you want to. That is there, and now I'm going to join the round, but I'm gonna switch back now to the just pink yarn, and I wanna do a round of ruffles with just the pink. So I'm gonna finish my last slip stitch with both pieces of yarn, then I'm going to chain one with the new yarn, pull tight on those tails, and then chain two, one and two. Now for this round, I am going to do one round of half double crochets. So I'm going to dub half double crochet over the tails from the other yarn, and I'm just gonna half double crochet all the way around, just one time in each stitch, and I will see you at the end of this round. Okay, so I just tried this on Thunder because I just finished this row and <laughs> you're gonna die, it's so cute. Uh, I'm not gonna show you until it's finished, so you have to stick around till the end of the video to see if this turned out 
awesome, but I'll tell you right now, it totally did. Okay, so what I'm gonna do for this next round, because this is pretty much the right size at this point for Thunder for a five, six pound Chihuahua. So for this next round, I'm going to slip stitch the round together. I'm gonna chain one, and now I'm actually going to slip stitch all the way around this round. I'm gonna just put one slip stitch in each stitch around, and that's just gonna thicken up the edge of that fabric. It's not going to add too much detail, but it is going to make it a little bit of a thicker edge. I'll show you up close. So in the spaces between the two stitches, I am just going to slip stitch in those spaces all the way around until I get back to the beginning. And then we'll decide what we're gonna do next for the elastic band. I think I wanna do an elastic band instead of a button closure. See how that looks? No detail, slip stitch detail. Just makes it a little bit more, a little bit more finished looking, in my opinion. Feel like I should rename this from the basket weave sweater to the sea cucumber sweater. <laughs> Thunder looks like a little sea cucumber in this, and it's very cute. All right, I've made it back to the beginning of the round. I am going to just slip stitch in that last stitch to join my round, and then I'm going to trim the yarn at this point, yarn over, pull the loop through, and I've got my yarn tail there. My plan now, this is so cute, look how cute this is! Okay, so Thunder's midpoint behind his ribs is about here, and my thought is I could use this elastic, I have a whole bunch of this black elastic, and I thought I could use this elastic and just sort of stitch it here and here, and that will kind of secure that sweater onto Thunder when he's wearing it and you won't see it. So it'll just sort of look like it's draped over him. And I think that would be really cute. So I'm going to figure out exactly where the uh, elastic is gonna go and then we will figure out how to put it on. So I've got the spot where we're gonna attach the elastic and I got a needle and some thread. I know these weren't in the ingredients you were gonna need for this, but just follow along. So I'm gonna go to where that stitch marker is and I'm going to line up the elastic right beside that stitch marker and I'm just gonna stitch it down. I don't think I have too much in terms of what I'm gonna do. I think I'll just do some simple stitches and I'm going to attach it right where the green part meets the red and pink part. So first let me thread my needle. All right, I've got the first part stitched on. It's not perfect, but from the side where you'll see it, it's completely seamless. And now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm gonna bring this elastic, fold it a couple of times just to cover up that raw edge. I'll bring it over to the other side and then we're gonna stitch this down as well. All right, I'm just gonna zoom through the stitching part because I'm not really following any specific stitch. I'm not doing a blanket stitch here, I'm just doing like some wrapping stitches. I'm just doing some strong stitching to hold the elastic in place. So I'm just gonna zoom through it and I will see you back here once I finish stitching on the elastic. And there we go. I'm just gonna trim the edges and now you can see that little elastic band just sort of tucks underneath the sweater and that's what's gonna hold the sweater onto Thunder's tummy. Okay, this is really cute. <laughs> All right, first, before I decide if there's any need for any extra thing, I'm gonna weave in my ends here and just get rid of that so I don't have to deal with it later. And I'm not gonna lie, I, now I'm just, the more I'm looking at it, the more I'm thinking it's done. This, this sweater is finished. It doesn't make sense and it doesn't have to because it's for a chihuahua who already doesn't make sense. My 12 year old chihuahua with no teeth can wear any kind of fashion and look amazing because He's a 12 year old chihuahua with no teeth. So, let me get this on him so we can do the outro. So here it is friends, what do you think? Oh God, is he not the cutest dog in the whole world? I can't. With the beautiful ribbed collar, he is very regal. And then we've got that adorable basket weave, which this project was a good practice for that basket weave stitch. We've got that whole wide back section. Then we did a little bit more practice of our half double crochets. And then the ruffles around the outside, I think they just make it so cute, especially with the front post, back post, double crochet sort of border around that frill around the outside. 
By doing the two double crochets on the edge, we ruffled it out quite a bit, and you can sort of play with those ruffles and put them in a specific order if you want it to look really neat, but I think I like it just sort of fluffed frilly out the way it is. This is gonna be Thunder's spring sweater. It'll just keep him warm enough, but it'll still have a bit of a breeze to it. I think your chihuahua's gonna like it too. I think this will fit most dog shape sizes from, I'm gonna say, four to eight pounds in terms of how long the sweater is. If you've got a larger dog, you can just keep going in that basket weave stitch as long as you need to, to make that basket weave hit probably the last rib on your dog's waist. If you get the basket weave stitch to the last rib, you can follow the rest of the pattern just the same way that I've done it and it should work out for you just fine. Let me know what you think in the comments down below and if you're gonna try and make this super cute sweater too. I think the elastic band adds a real ease of use to this project and I think that it is fairly beginner friendly. All of the stitches are very simple. We work with single crochet, double crochet, and half double double crochet. We just do some interesting variations to make them appear like a basket weave or like a ribbed stitch or like a ruffle. So that's all I've got for you today, friends. Oh wait, before I go, I want to say a special thank you to my patrons for this month. Here is the list of everyone supporting me on Patreon. If you would like to join our Patreon and get special access to early videos, as well as private access to our Discord server, where you can share photos of what you're working on, ask questions, and it's just a great community with a lot of fun vibes in it. So if that sounds fun to you, join the Patreon and you'll get access to all of those things and more stuff too. For example, this spring I'm sending out seeds to all of my patrons for flower gardens, natural dye gardens, and so much more. Anyways, thank you patrons. And that's all I've got for you today. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you next week. Bye.